today with us we have Martha Margaret Cotton, and we're glad to have you with us. Thank you. Um, I came about to uh, know Martha Margaret actually through R.J. Gore, and you're taking the classes at the at the seminary. Is that correct? That's right. I'm supposed to graduate in August. Excellent. And tell us a little bit about this capstone project that you've that's been working on that I have heard is excellent. As a matter <laughs> of fact, um, for our viewers, uh, Dr. Gore actually sent this to me and says well, it's a great work and I really needed to look at it. Mm -hmm. Thus, our, our conversation. Tell us, well, first of all, before you tell us about that, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are. I know that you and your husband have been called into missions and um, talk to us a little bit about that. Yes, um, my husband Sam and I are world witness. We're full-time world witness missionaries, and uh, we feel our ministry is theological education. Um, Sam's focus is global, global theological education, so he's with MT3, Mobile Theological Training Team, and I am called to wherever God has me. Wherever he will use me is where I feel called right now, um, and so that's that's what we're doing right now. We're, we're um, based in Rock Hill, South Carolina at Ebenezer ARP, so that's where we're worshiping right now. Excellent. And so Capstone, tell us a little bit of how that got started. And I know that um, you were at Ebenezer ARP Church and you started a women's Bible study there, got one, had one going. And uh, mm -hmm. just reading the pages that I've read, it was exciting to see uh, mm -hmm. your love and desire to see women grow in God's word. Yes. Um, well, I ended up in seminary because of that love of the word of God and the real, I went to a conference where I realized it, they were talking about biblical illiteracy or biblical poverty and how so many people in the broadly evangelical church today, much less the world, know nothing about the Bible. And even people who call themselves Christians don't, they don't really know the Bible at all. And it just got my heart on fire. And I felt like the Lord was calling me um, to seminary so that I could be more effective in women's ministry. And um, so that's how I got into seminary. And that led to, you know, learning about, as I learned in seminary, I realized how much it would help to have for women to learn how to actually read the Bible itself in a theologically safe way and to not feel like they have to start with a commentary, but that they're able to read the word and actually dig into the word for themselves and then give themselves guardrails with the commentary afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, and so in seminary, uh, in my degree, the Master's of Theological Studies, they require a capstone project at the very end of your studies. And um, so I was like, oh, this is perfect. It's like an excuse. <laughs> I get to do this experiment on the women in my church. And thankfully the elders were willing and the women were willing. And so we developed, we called it the Berean Bible Club um, based on the, the um, passage in Acts 17 about um, the Bereans and how they were more noble because they really studied the scriptures to see if what Paul and them were saying was true. Um, and so that's how it got started. And, um, you know, my, my goal was just to, to see women studying the actual word of God and that intimacy with Christ that comes from it. Talk to us about when you said intimacy with Christ and growing deeper. Mm. Um, you told us a little bit of how the Lord led that. How, if, if a, uh, say a woman was teaching a Bible study and really desired to see that with her group, what are some steps you might give her to help her out? Um, well, big picture, we need to help women feel comfortable reading the word itself and not to feel like, well, I'm afraid to read it because I might not interpret it correctly. Um, so I need to just immediately read a commentary or I'm going to sit and I'm going to listen to someone else teach me without actually reading it myself. Um, I think that's what we kind of fall into. And so I would tell a woman that's in leadership, like, okay, how can we get your women reading in the word during the week themselves, digging in it, and then meeting weekly together to discuss it? And then maybe then you teach or then you have that maybe you teach and you give them a passage. Um, I mean, a commentary to read like this, like, again, okay, read these three pages from this commentary before we come back together. Um, that's what I would suggest. And that's what this project really was about is helping or developing um, a ministry that does that. Excellent. And you were talking about as you develop this, the Lord gave you a desire to actually help other churches and help other women's um, 
programs. Tell us a little bit about that and maybe how your availability to help these churches. Yeah, um, as I, as we have done this at Ebenezer and as I've developed this for the Capstone Project, but also just for ministry generally, I've realized that it really is something that's transferable. It's not something that's specifically for Ebenezer. It's really for the local church. And um, because, you know, women, a lot of women are going to know that they're supposed to read the Bible. So they're going to read the Bible and we don't, we're going to interpret it, whether we interpret it correctly or not, it's going to be interpreted. And so we need to be able to have the tools and the training to interpret it correctly. Um, and honestly, this is a little off topic, but one reason this is so close to my heart too, is because I've realized that what happens is when you're not offering weekly, deep, rich Bible study at your church, what happens for the women who are interested, who maybe have a teaching gift or leadership gift, or just love the word of God and want to read it, they're going to go to an outside. They're going to go to a parachurch ministry, which is wonderful. Parachurch ministries are awesome. They have so much good, but nothing replaces local church accountability, local church doctrine, the things that we believe being taught from that viewpoint, those are very, very important. Um, and now I've forgotten the original question. <laughs> no, that was all right. Now I'm now just trying to figure it. out how the late, how, what, what are you, could you do to help these churches? All right. Well, that's all right. That was a good, good point. <laughs> um, well, the nice thing about this is it's, it's really organized what I've this project because it was forced to be organized by Erskine Theological Seminary forced me to get organized with it. And so what I have here is I've developed a leadership handbook that um, it goes through things like, okay, this is, you want to make sure you're meeting with your leaders very regularly. You need to pray for your women daily. You need to contact, like, like, let's say I'm leading a ministry of um, leaders, and then they're ministering to the rest of the women in the church. Um, I'm going to help them, like, encourage them. You need to contact your, your women in your group that, weekly so that they know that you care about them and um, get their prayer requests and pray for them daily. And, and it's amazing. Once a woman, once they know that you're really, truly praying for them every day, that you really do care, they open up. And when someone opens up is when the word of God can really go in. And so um, <clears throat> this leadership handbook, it's not at the point, and I don't know if it ever would be, to where I can just hand it to somebody. I, can't, I don't think I could just hand it to a church and have them run off because I don't think it's, it needs more explanation. Um, but I could do, I can come train women that feel a call to leadership, maybe a group of women that want a weekly Bible study, but don't know where to start. Um, women that want to do actual study in the word and not just a book study about the Bible. Um, I could come in and train on how to do that in a safe way, a theologically safe way. Um, and so there's a, there's an element of it with practical leadership training and then um, more theological training um, as far as just how you read the word of God. You know, how do you just open it and do this? Or, you know, we want to skip straight to application. How do I not skip straight to application? How do I find what it really means and cross references and all of that stuff? That's awesome. That's great. Now, one of the things that you did tell me as well that I, as this training, you really are looking, you would love to have churches just call you and email you and say, please come help me. That's one thing that really impressed me. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. I, you know, Sam and I are full-time missionaries. And so I'm full-time given to the ministry of, of the word and the ministry for the Lord. Um, and right now, honestly, we're not able to really travel overseas. Um, and so I would love to just come anywhere at any time. Um, I, I feel like I am, I feel like the Lord has called me to be full-time available to the ARP denomination in whatever way I can be used. Um, and so I'm, I am really truly open to coming and helping. No church is too small, no church is too big. Mm -hmm. I, I would, anything that I can help with, I would love to. Well, thank you, Martha Margaret. I appreciate that. It's exciting to see your passion and your zeal for what you're doing for women's ministry. And um, I'm just, I'll, for our viewers, I'm gonna put uh, Martha Margaret's uh, email up 
here. And so I'm sure she would love to hear from you if you have any questions and any, anything like that. Um, thank you so much for your time. With yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Turner. I appreciate it.